Hi, I'm Lisa. Before I dive into my story, please remember to like and subscribe for more. Now let me take you back to where it all started. Life was a blur of deadlines and family dinners for me. As a marketing manager in a bustling city, my days were packed. But I loved the thrill of it all, especially knowing I was contributing significantly to our family's finances. My husband, Tom, was more the laid-back type, working from home as a freelance graphic designer. We were opposites in many ways, but it worked. Or so I thought. Our biggest joint endeavor was our house. I remember the day we bought it, a beautiful two-story in a quaint neighborhood. It was more than just a building. It was our future, our stability. I poured my heart and soul, and paycheck, into paying off that mortgage. Every extra dime I made went into ensuring that we would have a secure place to call home. What do you think of repainting the living room? I once asked Tom over dinner. Maybe a bright blue? He just nodded distractedly scrolling through his phone. Sure, whatever you think is best, Lisa. It was a typical response from Tom. Lately, he'd been distant, more interested in whatever was on his phone than in our conversations. I chalked it up to stress or a phase. We all have them, right? But it wasn't just Tom's aloofness. There were other signs, subtle shifts in the dynamics of our life that I didn't fully grasp until much later. His mother, Evelyn, who used to be just a weekly dinner guest, started popping up more frequently. One evening, as I was sorting through bills and planning the budget, I overheard Tom on a call in his study. His voice was hushed, but there was an urgency to his words. No, Mom, she doesn't know. Yeah, I'll handle it. Don't worry. I didn't think much of it then. Maybe it was just some family matter he didn't want to burden me with. In hindsight, I wish I'd asked more questions, dug a little deeper. But between my work planning our future, and keeping our home life stable, I just didn't have the bandwidth to suspect anything amiss. Weekends were the only times Tom and I really got to spend together, and even those began to change. He started suggesting his mom join us for our Saturday outings. Initially, I thought it was sweet, including her in our plans. But as time went on, it felt like she was taking over, choosing the restaurants, the activities, even commenting on how we should manage our finances. Maybe you should invest in some real estate, Tom. It's always a good option. Evelyn suggested one afternoon, as we were having lunch at her favorite spot, an old-fashioned diner she frequented since Tom was a kid. I don't know, Mom. Lisa and I have been focusing on paying off the house first, Tom replied, shooting me a quick glance. Ah, uh, but there are ways to make your assets work for you, dear. You should think about it. I smiled politely, but inside, I felt a twinge of annoyance. Our house was our choice. Our investment. Why was she meddling in it? Despite these changes, I kept pushing forward, believing that every marriage had its ups and downs. I was committed to making ours work, no matter what. Little did I know, the ground beneath me was about to give way, and my world as I knew it was about to shatter. The day that changed everything started like any other. I was sifting through the mail, a mix of bills and junk, when a legal-looking envelope caught my eye. It was addressed to Tom and me, but the contents were a shock to my system. It was a notice of auction. Our house, the one I'd poured years of hard-earned money into, was set to be auctioned off. I called out to Tom, my voice a mix of disbelief and rising anger. He walked in, his face the picture of everyday normalcy, until he saw the notice in my hand. What's this about, Tom? Why is our house, the one we've spent years paying for, being auctioned off? I demanded, the paper crinkling in my grip. Tom's eyes widened. That's... it's got to be a mistake, he stammered, but his voice lacked conviction. I wasn't convinced. Mistakes like this don't just happen. I'm calling them. I dialed the number on the notice, each ring a drumbeat of the impending storm. The truth was more bitter than I could have imagined. The house had been secretly transferred to Tom's mother, Evelyn, and she was selling it. I felt a cold shiver run down my spine. How? Why? Questions swirled in my head as I confronted Tom. Explain this to me, Tom. Why is your mother selling our house? A house I paid for? My voice was a mix of rage and hurt. Tom shifted uncomfortably. I... I thought it would be better for our finances. Mom suggested it. Better for our finances? To put our house, our security, in your mother's hands without even discussing it with me? The incredulity in my voice was palpable. He tried to reach out, but I recoiled. Lisa, please understand. It was meant to be a surprise. Mom has experience in real estate. She said it was a smart move. 
A surprise? By betraying my trust? By gambling with our home? I was nearly shouting now, the walls of our once happy home bearing witness to its undoing. Tom's face was a mixture of guilt and helplessness. I just wanted to secure our future. I didn't think it would end up like this. Secure our future? You've jeopardized our present, Tom. How could you be so naive? How could you let your mother manipulate us like this? The words poured out of me, a torrent of years of pent-up frustration and newfound betrayal. I thought I was doing the right thing, Tom whispered, his voice barely audible over the storm of my accusations. Right thing? You've done the worst possible thing, Tom. You've broken my trust, our marriage vows, everything. My voice broke, a mixture of anger and sorrow. There was a silence, heavy and thick, before I finally spoke again, my voice steady but cold. I want a divorce, Tom. I can't stay in a marriage built on lies and deceit. Tom looked shattered, his eyes pleading. Lisa, I'm sorry. Please, can we talk about this? But the decision was made, etched in stone by his betrayal. There's nothing left to discuss. I'll be contacting a lawyer. I suggest you do the same. As I walked away from Tom, away from the life we had built on lies, I felt a strange sense of liberation. It was the end of an era, but the beginning of a new chapter, one where I was the author of my own destiny. In the wake of my decision to divorce Tom, a new determination took hold of me. I wasn't just going to walk away. I was going to fight for justice. The first step was gathering evidence. I knew I needed irrefutable proof of the fraudulent transfer if I was to stand any chance in court. I started with our bank records. Hours were spent poring over statements, tracking every payment made towards the mortgage. My meticulous nature, often a source of teasing from Tom, became my greatest ally. I found every transaction, every transfer, every penny that I had contributed. The evidence was clear as day. I had paid for the house, our house. Next, I dug through emails and legal documents. Buried in a pile of paperwork, I found the deed transfer documents. My name, once proudly beside Tom's, was now replaced by Evelyn's. Seeing it in black and white was a blow, but it fueled my resolve. With my evidence in hand, I sought legal assistance. I found a lawyer, Miss Angela Carter, known for her prowess in family law. In our first meeting, her sharp gaze and no-nonsense demeanor told me I had made the right choice. Miss Carter, I have bank statements, emails, everything. He did this without my knowledge, without my consent, I explained, spreading the documents across her desk. She scanned the papers, her expression a mix of professional coolness and simmering anger. This is a clear case of fraud, Lisa. We have a strong argument, but we need more. We need to prove intent. That's when I decided on my most daring move yet, recording incriminating conversations. I knew it was risky, but I had to catch Tom and Evelyn admitting their deceit. I invited Tom over under the guise of discussing the divorce amicably. As we sat in what was once our living room, now a battleground of betrayal, I steered the conversation. Tom, why did you do it? Why did you transfer the house to your mother? He hesitated, glancing nervously around the room. Lisa, I... I thought it was for the best. Mom has experience with these things. She said it would be a good financial move. You mean, selling our house behind my back? Was that her idea too? My voice was calm, but inside I was seething. Tom shifted uncomfortably. She just wanted to help Lisa. She thought we could make some profit and... And what, Tom? Lie to me? Betray me? I pressed, my phone discreetly recording every word. He sighed, a mixture of guilt and resignation in his eyes. I'm sorry, Lisa. I never meant for it to go this far. The conversation was damning, but I needed more. I needed Evelyn. Confronting Evelyn was harder. She was a formidable woman, shrewd and cunning, but I was determined. I invited her for coffee, a neutral ground where I could catch her off guard. Evelyn, why did you agree to this? To take the house Tom and I worked so hard for, I asked, my voice steady. She sipped her coffee, her eyes cold. Lisa, dear, it's just business. You have to be smart in this world. I was helping Tom secure his future. But at the expense of our marriage, our home, I pushed, the recorder in my purse capturing her every word. She shrugged, a gesture so casual it sent chills down my spine. Sometimes you have to make tough decisions for the greater good. I had what I needed. With the recordings and the documents, I met with Miss Carter again. Her eyes lit up as she listened to the recordings. Lisa, this is it. 
This is the evidence we need to take them down, she said, a triumphant smile on her face. The stage was set. It was time to bring Tom and Evelyn to justice. It wasn't just about the house anymore. It was about righting a wrong, about reclaiming my dignity. The courtroom was a stark contrast to the chaos that had become my life. It was orderly, solemn, a place where truth was supposed to prevail. As I sat there with Miss Carter beside me, I felt a mix of nervous anticipation and a fierce desire for justice. Tom and Evelyn sat across from us, their faces a mask of strained composure. The judge, a stern-looking man with sharp eyes, called the court to order. It was time. Miss Carter was the first to present. She laid out the facts with surgical precision. The bank records, the deed transfer documents, the recordings. Her voice was calm but firm, each word a nail in the coffin of Tom and Evelyn's deceit. The evidence clearly shows that my client, Lisa, was the victim of a calculated and deliberate act of fraud. She was betrayed by her husband and her mother-in-law in the most egregious manner, Miss Carter stated, her gaze never wavering from the judge. Tom's lawyer tried to counter. He painted a picture of a misunderstanding, of intentions gone awry. But his words rang hollow, especially when Miss Carter played the recordings. The courtroom was silent as Tom and Evelyn's voices filled the space their own words sealing their fate. I never meant for it to go this far, Tom's voice echoed through the speakers. It's just business, Lisa. Sometimes, you have to make tough decisions. Evelyn's cold, calculated tone followed. The judge listened intently, his expression unreadable. When the presentations were over, he took a moment before delivering his verdict. My heart pounded in my chest, a mix of fear and hope. The evidence presented in this case is unequivocal. The transfer of the property from Lisa to Evelyn was done without Lisa's knowledge or consent, constituting a clear act of fraud. The judge began, his voice steady and authoritative. Therefore, I rule in favor of the plaintiff, Lisa. The property transfer is hereby declared null and void. Furthermore, Tom and Evelyn will face penalties for their actions. It was as if a weight had been lifted off my shoulders. Justice had been served. I had won, not just the case, but a battle against deceit and betrayal. After the verdict, the house was legally returned to me. But it was no longer a home. It was a reminder of a past I wanted to leave behind. So, I made the decision to sell it. Standing in front of the for sale sign, I felt a sense of closure. This house, which had been the center of so much joy and then so much pain, was now just a building. I was ready to move on, to start a new chapter. As I walked away, I didn't look back. My journey hadn't been easy. But it had taught me about strength, resilience, and the power of standing up for oneself. I was no longer the woman who had been blindsided by betrayal. I was a survivor, ready to face whatever the future held. And with each step, I felt more empowered, more in control of my destiny. I had reclaimed my victory, not just in court, but in life. The story of Lisa's journey has come to an end, a tale of betrayal, resilience, and justice. Now I have a question for you. If you were in Lisa's shoes, would you have made the same choices she did? Could you have walked away from your home and marriage for the sake of justice and self-respect? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Your opinions matter and can spark meaningful conversations. And if you enjoyed this story, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more compelling tales. Your support helps us bring more stories like Lisa's to life. Thank you for watching and engaging with our content.